and let us all that we can to build a better future. So I want to play a video of Norman uh, Finkelstein um, explaining the reality of Gaza. And he was interviewed by a person named Michaela Peterson. Now, I won't be able to play the full interview in its full entirety, but there's two segments that I would like to play. And so if you haven't get, had a chance to check out our, her YouTube channel, it's Michaela Peterson. I'll be sure to share the YouTube uh, link uh, to that uh, to her YouTube channel. So that way you guys can check out this full interview. It was four days ago. But the reason why I want to play it is because there are two articles that caught my attention. Oh, well, not two articles, a video and an article. And I think it's a perfect setup to really explain the reality of the situation on the ground in Israel. As a matter of fact, I got two other videos to play. So... Let's first start off with the one that's going to trigger the, the vote blue no matter who crowd. I know I got an article from RT. I know a lot of the liberals don't like RT, but too bad. At least 2,000 children killed in Gaza, according to a charity. So at least 2,000 children have died in Israel's bombardment of Gaza over the past 17 years. UK-based UK aid group Save the Children has said the charity cited figures from the Hamas-operated health ministry in Gaza which stated on Monday that at least 5,087 people have been killed in Israel's siege of the enclave, including at least 2,055 uh, children. Thousands of homes, dozens of playgrounds, schools, hospitals, churches, mosques have been damaged or destroyed in Gaza, Save the Children said. At least 4,600 children have been injured, as reported by the Gaza Ministry of Health, some with excruciating burns, lost limbs, and other horrific blast injuries. It claimed that the Israeli airstrikes are killing and injuring children indiscriminately. Well, let's go ahead and uh, hear this from why this is happening. From a representative from Israel. Rocks. They're throwing rocks. Like this. Oh. Wow. An Abrams tank cannot withhold or withstand a rock that are thrown at Israelis in their cars and on buses. They are thrown at Israeli men and women, at Israeli babies and children every single day. So every single day, everyone in Israel has had a rock thrown at them. That's why we're that's why we're that's why we're bombing carpet bombing, white phosphorus bombing. Hospitals. Aid stations, homes because of a rock, a rock. In 2021 alone, Israelis suffered 1,775 rock attacks by Palestinian terrorists, but the word says nothing. Members of the council, would you consider it a terror attack if a rock like this was thrown at your car while driving, driving with your children? This is exactly the kind of attack that claimed the life of four-year-old Adele Beaton and others. What would you do, honorable delegates? Well, look, I, I just I just wanted to say this here, okay? You know, no one wants to see anybody die. All right, I'm gonna quote Donald Trump here. I want people to stop dying, right? But what I would ask this representative from Israel, hey, how'd you feel if uh, you know you woke up one day and you found out that two thousand children were just 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 blown off the face of the earth? Over a ridiculous conflict, over land, religion, politics. 75 years of oppression. But hey, hey, here's corporate media. I had to play this. Yes, this is this is pretty unhinged. And it's from Fox News of all places. So, you know, hey, statements like this. What could possibly go wrong? Uh, I don't think we can have a Palestinian state at this point. I've had it with the Palestinians. I've given up on the Palestinians. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, so just extermination. Gotcha, I hear you. If I was in Israel, I wouldn't be talking about a Palestinian state right now. I don't think Joe Biden should be talking about a Palestinian state right now. And I don't like how people tried to differentiate between the Palestinians and Hamas. To me, I see people with guns. That's Hamas. The people without the guns are the Palestinians. They believe the same thing. The Palestinians hire Hamas to run their government. 
You poll them, they all love killing Jews. It's in their charter. They say they believe in suicide bombings. Every time a Palestinian refugee goes to another country, it doesn't work out so well. For the uh, wait a minute. Hold on, buddy. You're, you're, you're making a broad. You're doing a whole big broad stroke right there. Because what I'm seeing here is the absolute extermination of a people. Fox News, take it easy, okay? Maybe, may, what, are, are, are you being recorded right now and you, you don't know that you're live on air? For the other country and for those Palestinians, no one wants them. You don't see Egypt opening up their doors. You don't see Jordan opening up. You don't see the Saudis. Why don't they want the Palestinians, Dana? I think we all know why they don't want the Palestinians, and it's not working out, having these Palestinians and Hamas right next door to the Israelis. So time is running out for Netanyahu. I don't know why they're taking so long with this ground offensive. I would have struck, obviously. Got to love a fake tough guy. I would have I would have called in the tanks and started carpet bombing everything. Get all get all the special forces in there. Start shooting it all up. What what we're witnessing here is probably Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu trying to see how far he can get away with this. That's that's exactly what we're seeing. Now, of course, the whole international community is saying, "Hey, ceasefire, ceasefire." But he he's not going to be doing that anytime soon. He's going to see how far he can go. Because at the end of the day, the overall goal of the apartheid government is to take all of the land, not just Gaza, the West Bank too. Constantly keep on moving forward and moving forward. We're witnessing a destruction. How would you feel if somebody did this to you? Constantly keep on bombing you, taking away your home, destroying your livelihood. You wouldn't be too happy, would you? But don't tell that to the guys at Fox News. I have no military experience. <laughs> yeah. You don't. So quit talking. I'm talking about there's a certain amount of goodwill that's built up. There's a certain amount of political capital that the West will allow Netanyahu in the wake of this horrific attack. Every day that goes by and they don't move in on the ground and root out these terrorists and their little labyrinth under and in, in the command and control, the decapitation strikes, it's another day where the United Nations, where the Arab League and some of these skittish uh, American politicians are going to say, you know what, let's have a ceasefire. Let's, let's just wait, Let, you know, let's stop, let's just stop. And if they don't go in hard and they don't go in decisively and they don't have the time to go in and root out these terrorists, then they're not going to do it. And then we're going to be back again five years later. There's going to be another horrific attack here. Well, that's, you know, not, not to call it out, but here it is. That's probably the overall plan just to keep the status quo, because let's face it, Benjamin Netanyahu, before this whole entire situation took place, before the attacks took place, he was struggling politically. And the thing is, if you're a politician and you got some problems, let's just bring up the old movie Wag the Dog. You need a good old war to distract you. You need a war, a war to cause a distraction. Now, he is still low in approval. Well, not low in approval, but let's just say he is struggling politically right now in his nation. And so his overall goal is to bomb, bomb Gaza, keep on bombing Gaza, and then pull back. He's going to see how far he can go. But then, yeah, give it five years, and we'll be right back where we started from all over again because this is the situation that we are in, forever war. I want to pull up this video here from Norman Finkelstein being interviewed by Michaela Peterson. So let's go ahead and play this video. Let's go ahead and play this video so that all of you can see it firsthand. Let's check it out. So for, you, for the purposes of today's conversation, it means most of those Palestinians who crashed through the gates of Gaza, it was their first time ever leaving Gaza. They were in their 20s. They had never seen anything except via the web. They had never seen anything of the outside world. They had been confined to this space for 20 years. That's not hyperbole. That's not exaggeration. About half of Gaza 
half the population for the past 20 years has been unemployed. That figure or that percentage rises to 60% um, when you look at the youth. So now your audience should ponder, here is a population where a large part has been left for 20 years to just pace back and forth in an area that's among the densest, most densely populated in the world with nothing whatsoever else to look forward to. That's a fact. You get up each morning, there's no work, there's nowhere to go. You can't even try your look emigrating. See what happens. Come to the United States. Come to France. No. Nope. Can't leave. That's why David Cameron, the former British conservative prime minister, he described Gaza as an open air prison. Baruch Kimberlin, a respected Israeli sociologist at the Hebrew University, he described Gaza as the world's largest concentration camp, the largest concentration camp ever. The most of the water in Gaza is undrinkable, non-potable. Uh, a half of Gaza uh, is by international humanitarian agencies. It's labeled severely strong and secure. Now, collect all these facts with one other fact. Every listener should remember as Israel is now proceeding to annihilate, by their own admission, to annihilate all human life in the north, all breathing life in the northern sector of Gaza, that half of Gaza half, comprises children. So I want to pause it here. I want to keep my pausing to a minimum. Uh, because everything that Norman is saying in this interview is extremely relevant and important to understanding why, why, why this all happened. Because when you create an environment that holds no opportunity for the next generation, when you create an environment in which there is instability, economic uncertainty, lack of any kind of infrastructure whatsoever and the people are forced not to leave they need to stay behind a wall and not get out not break free what do you think that's going to do to people how do you think that will impact them mentally emotionally physically what would you do if that was you and of course anyone that believes in the oh the propaganda that corporate media spews out that these politicians spew out. Well, they need to hold Hamas accountable. You know what? There's a reason why Hamas and all these organizations exist. You know, here's a little side note. Remember Al Qaeda? Remember that fantastic group? Who do you think helped create that Frankenstein monster? Who do you help? Who do you think helped create Osama bin Laden? He was working for us when the Musha Adin was fighting off against the Soviets. You know, at one point, Hey, no one talks about that great handshake that Donnie Boy Rumsfeld had with a little known guy. You might not have heard of him called Saddam Hussein. OK. All of this happens for a reason. And a lot of these organizations, even terrorist groups, are funded by surprise, surprise, various governments, including the ones in the West. And, you know, this might seem a little bit shocking, but with this right wing government that 
is the apartheid government in Israel, it is in their best interest to have an enemy so that people are distracted, so they don't ask questions. And then furthermore, we see harsher laws being put in place to build that resentment up and up and up and up and up. 75 years of oppression. And people finally lash out and they're surprised. They're surprised that that happens. There will not be peace in our time. One half of Gaza are children. If you can imagine the accumulated rage, the accumulated anger at being trapped, being born into the largest concentration camp ever. And then after 20 years, they have that moment where they can exact revenge on October 27th. Excuse me, October 7th. But that's still not the full picture. In fact, as ghastly as that picture is, it doesn't even begin to touch the surface of the reality because periodically Israel launches these high-tech massacres on Gaza and in the course of which they kill very large numbers of civilians in operation cast lead from December 26, 2008 to January 17, 2009. They killed about 1,400 Palestinians, 350 of them children, and demolished, leveled, flattened 6,000 homes. Uh, then that was called Operation Cast Lead. I'll skip a large number of other operations because time doesn't allow it. I will only say that try as I may, I can never remember the names of even half those murderous, high-tech destructions visited on Gaza. What Amnesty International called, it's not my title, bear in mind, after Operation Cast Lead, they issued a mammoth report titled 22 Days of Death and destruction. In 2014, July, August 2014, Israel initiated Operation Protective Edge. In the course of Protective Edge, it killed about 550 Palestinian children. It demolished 18,000 homes. The head of the International Committee of the Red Cross, Peter Maurer is his name, M-A-U-R-E-R, for those of you listeners who wanted to check my what I'm saying now, it's the ICRC, International Committee of the Red Cross, Peter Maurer. He went to Gaza after Operation Protective Edge, as the Israelis called it, and he said, quote, in all of my life, I have never witnessed destruction on the scale that I've now observed in Gaza. 
I didn't want to interrupt that. Because everything that he has been speaking in this interview, and this interview, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, took place uh, four days ago with a YouTube channel. Uh, it's hosted by a person named Mikaela Peterson. And I will be playing another segment of this interview because those videos that I played of that Israeli representative saying, oh, my goodness, a rock is being thrown at us. And, of course, you have Fox News and that unhinged rant there. It is understandable why there's so much rage and anger happening. When you have a media that fails to do its due diligence, and that's not just, I'm not just only hanging out with uh, calling out Fox News. I'm calling out MSNBC and CNN. They're just as guilty too. All of corporate media, all of corporate media is guilty in creating this situation between Israel and Palestine. And we are witnessing destruction and extermination the likes of which that we haven't seen solely intensified. We've seen it before, but it's being filmed so much that we are seeing the imagery of families, communities destroyed. The longer this conflict goes on, it's quite clear that it's going to repeat itself five or ten years down the road. You can't look me in the eye and tell me that there will be peace. Or that no one is going to be angry and no one will not want to strike back. I want to pull up this uh, part of the interview where if there's going to be any possibility of peace. So let's go ahead and play it. Okay, I guess last question then. Is there is there any way forward for peace or is this going to get a lot nastier like what do you what do you see ahead i know you're not a clairvoyant but for the next five years are things gonna get worse or is there any way to resolve it the the, the answer is there's, there's gonna be conflict i mean that, that's just that's just my two cents after all after all the stuff that we've been seeing on social media you can't tell me that oh yeah peace is now achieved everyone's happy that's that's not how it plays out well Right now, we're entering the stage of the third great expulsion. There was the expulsion in 1948. About 750,000 Palestinians were expelled. 1967, between three and 400,000 Palestinians were expelled after the 1967 war. And now, about a million or more Palestinians in Gaza will be expelled from half of Gaza that will be annexed to Israel, about half of Gaza, as its new, quote-unquote, the term they use is security zone. And probably the international pressure will become overwhelming on Egypt to open the border with Gaza, and about half the population will be forced into exile again. That's my guess. It does not at this point seem that the international community will stop Israel from carrying on its next great expulsion, the one that's unfolding now. And then the next item on Israel's agenda will be able, will be to carry out a mass expulsion in the West Bank of Palestinian Arabs and thereby solve the, our, the Palestinian, or as they call it, the Arab problem, uh, and send the Palestinians into exile again. There won't be peace. Now, the UN and our spineless progressive politicians like AOC or Bernie Sanders or the Congressional Progressive Caucus, they're not going to do a damn thing. And yet people are now shocked and say, why would this happen? There's reasons why. That's all being laid out. There was an opportunity for peace. There was. 
It's just we had leaders worldwide who lacked the courage to believe in that peace. We have to be better, and we have to be different. Um, for those of you who don't know, I just want to at least properly acknowledge uh, the YouTube creator uh, who did that interview. Again, it was four days ago, but I uh, just want to just pull this up here. Uh, Michaela Peterson, this is the channel. Uh, there's a full interview. Uh, it's almost two hours long, so please check it out if you haven't done so already. I encourage all of you, all of you to see that uh, full uh, interview. So I'll be posting uh, the link to the interview in the live stream chat. And I'll also be clipping this video as well with the original link uh, of the full interview. So that way all of you can see it because I believe that it's important for people to at least share this because it's the right thing to do. It truly is the right thing to do. We have to be better. We have to look at this situation and citizens in this country we cannot ignore what we're witnessing on our smartphones, on our computers. This unending war is going to destroy us. And if we want to have a better future, we have to say no more.